Hello, Evie Sats. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, we are moving on to the last section of Chapter 3. That's Chapter 3, Section 2, Day 4 of the Practice of Statistics. Um, and basically all today is about is um, being able to look at computer output um, and determine what the numbers mean. Um, so the lesson's really short. Um, but I have a couple examples for you to just kind of um, try uh, to make sure that you understand how to interpret the output. Um, so more than likely, you probably won't see computer output that's much different from um, these two separate, so these are two different computer outputs. So this is from a program called Minitab, um, and this is a program called Jump. Um, and so. Both of those programs um, are used frequently for statistics. Um, both of these are representing the same information, um, just in, uh, it's just kind of like in a different way. Okay, so let's look at the mini tab output um, and kind of go through some of these things. So you want to kind of look at the labels. So um, the ones that are boxed are the ones that we're going to be using today. Um, so ARSC hopefully is. Um, self-explanatory. You can figure out that R S Q is R squared. Um, there's an adjusted R squared, but that's kind of out of the scope of this course, so you don't need to worry about that one for now. Um, so that's that's what R sq is. So remember, this is just a quick refresher, R squared um, is the coefficient of determination. Um, and if you want the correlation coefficient, which is just R, um, you just take the square root of 0 0.606, right? In this case, that's what R squared is. But the thing is, right, when you take the square root of a positive number, you're going to get a positive answer. Um, but R can be positive or negative. Um, and so you have to determine if the, um, is the data a positive relationship or is it a negative relationship. Um, and uh, if it's a negative relationship, then you would want the negative square root of this number. Um, and if it's a positive relationship, then you'd want the positive square root of that number. This S here, um, it does not have a subscript. So if you had um, both an X and a Y variable and you had um, that data, like the standard deviations of those things, it would look like S sub X or S sub Y. Right? Standard deviation of the x's, standard deviation of the y's. If there is no subscript, um, that is the standard deviation of the residuals. So s here, 0.739853, is the standard deviation of the residual. Okay, the last two um, are the slope and the y-intercept. Um, and the way that I kind of remember um, which one's which is there's always one that's labeled constant, um, and that's the the number that is constant. So if you have, um, you know, y equals mx plus b, the constant value is the, the, the number that does not have an x attached to it, right? So the constant coefficient is just the y-intercept. Um, so 3.5051 in this particular case would be your y-intercept, which means that this is your slope. Um, <clears throat> So let me write that down for you. And if it's not obvious from the problem, um, this the NEA change, so I'm not sure if we went over this problem, this context, but um, it's like measuring how much you wiggle like your non, um, like the little like fidgeting and like twirling pencils and stuff, like how many calories that burns. Um, and so the the term that's in front of the slope is um, the, the x variable, the independent variable. So um, I like to think of it as negative 0.00344 times NEA change equals whatever, you know, whatever your y variable is, obviously plus your y-intercept. Um, and so if it's not clear from the um, example, which one's the explanatory variable and which one's the response variable, um, this is kind of a good way to tell. Um, so this is always, like this is the variable that's attached to the slope, which is the x variable. Okay, <clears throat> so the, um, the jump output looks a little bit different, but it's a similar setup. Sorry, let me like rearrange it here. Um, 
So same kind of situation. Um, R -sque, or R -sque, in this case, it's now R squared, is R squared. And again, you get R by taking the square root of that number. Um, the root mean square error is the standard deviation of the residuals. The words that typically give me that indication is um, it's the mean square error. So residuals measure the error, and then you square those numbers, and then take the average of them, and then take the square root of it, um, which is how you find standard deviation. So basically, you're finding the standard deviation of the errors, which is the standard deviation of the residuals. Um, so that's kind of how I think about that. Um, and then if I want to measure, um, figure out which one's the y-intercept here and which one's the slope, same kind of situation. Um, I have my estimate for my parameter. So um, my intercept, in this case, they label it as intercept, is 3.505. Um, so that's my y-intercept. Um, and then my NEA change variable here, or my constant um, my <laughs> coefficient. There we go. That's the word I wanted. Um, my NEA change uh, coefficient is negative 0 0.003441, which is the slope. With that information, you should be able to answer most questions that come up. Um, so basically, the rest of the uh, video is just examples. So um, here's example number one. Um, we've got how well does the number of beers a person drinks predict his or her blood alcohol content, um, and BAC. Um, and so you kind of have an experiment where you have 16 volunteers with a BAC of zero um, drink randomly assigned numbers of uh, beer cans. Um, and then 30 minutes later, police officer measure their BAC. Um, and then this is the output. Okay, so here are your questions. I'm going to kind of zoom in on the questions there for a second. Um, it says, what's the equation of the LSRL? Um, and then interpret to find any variables you lose. Interpret the slope of the regression line. Find the correlation. Is the line appropriate model for the data? Um, and what tells you that? And then what was the BAC reading for the person who consumed nine beers? Show your work. Um, so you need the computer output, which is here. Um, in order to answer some of those questions. And then you also, sorry, I'm zooming in because like the quality of the thing is not that great. Um, and then also, um, you're also given these two graphs. So this one's the BAC and beers, and this one says residual and beers. Um, so go ahead and try those problems on your own first, uh, and then you can continue the video and um, I'll explain how to do it. Okay, so the first question is um, find the equation for the least squares regression line. Um, so you need to know what the slope and the y-intercept are. Um, if you weren't sure, rewind and watch from the beginning. Um, but this is my slope, and this is my y-intercept. Um, and so you always, anytime, I mean, I probably have already said this a bunch, but anytime you're writing your equation for your line of best fit um, or your least squares regression line, you have to define your variables. So for A, um, I wrote that y hat equals 0 0.01796 x minus 0 0.0127, but I define my variables here, where x equals the number of beers drunk and y hat is the predicted BAC. Um, you can also replace x with just parentheses beers and y hat with BAC hat um, is another way to include context, but you always have to have context here. So there's your interpretation of the slope of the regression line. Uh, for every additional beer drunk, we expect the BAC to increase by 0 0.0176796. Uh, um, finding the correlation means you have to go look at the computer output um, and look for R squared. So in this case, um, R squared is 80% or 0.8. So I need to take the square root of that um, to get my R value, and I have to choose the sign. Is it positive or negative? So R is the square root of R squared, uh, which is the square root of 0.8, um, which you get is about 0.8944. Um, and I chose that it should be positive because the more beers you drink, the higher your BAC gets. So it should be a positive relationship. Um, another way to tell is 
what is the slope? Is the slope positive or negative? Um, it should be the same. So in this case, right, our slope is positive 0 0.01796. So R should be the same as that. Um, the next question is, is a line of an appropriate model for the data and what information tells you this? Um, you need to look at the residual plot. So in this case, here's the residual plot. Um, and basically, you're looking for no pattern in the residual or very little pattern in the residual. Um, and uh, yeah, so you could say something like, yes, we believe a line is a good fit because, you know, it generally follows the trend of a line on the scatter plot. And also, there's no clear pattern in the residual plot. You have to mention the residual plot if someone asks you, is a line a good fit? You have to look at the residual plot as well. Um, so that would be the answer to D. And then E asks you, what's the BAC rating for the person who consumed nine beers? Um, so you could, um, there's a couple options. You could go to the residual, um, or you could zoom in on your scatter plot here. Sorry, again, for the bad fuzziness. Um, but, you know, you'd go up to the person with nine beers and find that their BAC is probably about 0.18-ish. Um, so showing your work means like show it approximately on the graph or, you know, if you have a line, um, uh, of, um, an equation of the line of best fit, of the regression line, um, you could plug in um, the value, the x value. But in this case, you're not predicting. Um, you're actually looking at what's the BAC rating for the person who consumed nine beers. So you're actually looking at this person who had nine beers, what was their BAC level? Um, so that would be that person there, so you can read that. Um, if you, you were asked to predict what the BAC would be for somebody with eight beers or 10 beers, um, then you could use your uh, regression line um, and the equation of the regression line to um, solve that. So the next example is the same kind of deal. Um, so uh, you have zoologists examining the relationship between the age and weight of 12 randomly selected black bears in a Canadian habitat. And here's the data of some of, you know, some of their research. So you've got um, the age of the bears and then their weight in pounds. So here's your raw data. But it also gives you a scatter plot. It gives you computer output. Um, and it gives you the residual plot as well. Um, so um, the questions are, describe the relationship, write the equation of the LSRL, interpret the slope, predict the weight of a black bear who's 12 years old, and um, so, you know, you can answer the rest of the questions. So I'm not going to, like, explain these, um, but I'm going to write the answers down. So again, if you're not 100% sure on this stuff, try it, check your answers, uh, make sure you do okay. Okay, here are your answers. Um, for A, don't forget DOFs, direction, outliers, form, strength. Um, so if you're interpreting um, or describing the relationship between the age and weight of black bears, um, you should be including all of those things. Um, B is just the um, least squares regression line. C, interpret the slope. <clears throat> it says every year the bear gets older, we expect that it is, oh, psh, my English sucks. Um, we expect that um, it gains 1.272 pounds. Um, um, and then uh, this is a prediction for a 12-year-old bear. Um, we would expect it to be about 56 pounds. Um, and then this is a, I chose under prediction because if you look at the residual, um, it looks like this bear is the 12-year-old bear. Um, and so um, its residual is positive, which means the line of best fit, which is like down here, um, is an underestimate of the true value at that point. Um, and then R squared is um, the variation observed in the weight can be explained by the bear's age. And basically this means that um, about 29% of the variability within the weight um, can be attributed to variables other than age. Um, so things that we don't aren't thinking about, like maybe the mother's health or the food sources or, you know, things like that. Um, and in this case, 
the youngest bear um, they have data on is five and a half years, so this is extrapolation.